Ladies and gentlemen, the technical session starts now. So as per the agenda, from this time up to uh, after 20 minutes, introduction to Islamic banking and finance by Dr. Muridin al Mahmoud. After that, Mr. Abdul Ghaffar Ismail and uh, Mr. Sajid Bodhi will do the concluding remarks for this lecture. Of course, the main topic of the conference is Islamic banking and finance. And in this connection, it will be very important to understand the basics of uh, Islamic finance. As you know, uh, Islam is not only a religion, it's also a code of life. And it covers values, principles, encompassing all aspects of life, whether it be religious, social, economical, or political. There are three or uh, four main features of Islamic finance. First of all, of course, the elimination of riba, interest. Second one is the elimination of uncertainty, excessive uncertainty, we can say, in contracts, what is known as gharar. The third one is to eliminate speculation, which is known as al-qimar. And of course, also the elimination of Mesir. These are the four fundamentals in Islamic finance. So without any delay, I will now invite Dr. Muruddin al Muhammad, who will talk on the topics of fundamentals of Islamic finance, and most importantly, what is its rationale behind the prohibition of riba and the other fundamental basic things which are mentioned. Dr. Muruddin al Distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat, and a very good morning to everyone. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm accustomed to give uh, lectures, and I believe that this is going to be a challenging one because I'm only given 30 minutes, not to tell you about the foundation or the fundamental of Islamic finance, but we are going to look at the rationale behind Islamic finance, or we're going to look at the, the principle, the rationale behind the principle. Now, we have certainly uh, noticed that we live today in a world where the conventional finance is surrounding us. Now all the banks, uh, most of the banks, we have more conventional bank uh, in the world. And Islamic finance, or the total of asset of Islamic finance, which is today nearly to one trillion, represent only 5 to 10 percent. So this is very small, very small. Now I'm not going to go through this. This is the IOF explanation or the definition of riba. Now you can have it later, you can go through it, all right? And uh, the two questions that I want you to think while I'm going to discuss, all right? while I'm presenting today are uh, how could a system of finance that originated in the divide over a thousand years have to offer to such world? I mean, this is what we have been asking ourselves today. What is Islamic finance? How could, what could they offer? What benefits can we reap from it? How about a society? How about an individual? How about the nations itself? All right. Mm -hmm. And the second one is, how could it, how could it possibly compete? Now today, 
we have to compete with a conventional bank. Not only compete with a conventional bank, we have to compete with what we call interest. And you know, uh, if you are bankers, you know how easily, right, for you to structure or to re-engineer the product based on the interest system, all right? Now, in order for me to do that, to look at the rational behind Islamic finance, I'll go through the principle. Then why we go to the principle, some of this principle has already been mentioned earlier. Now, we try to look at some of the points. Now, perhaps you may, uh, you may be aware that we have today what we call the maqasi, the sharia, the goal of Islam. Everything can be justified in our, in our life today. Now, I may not focus on the maqasid. Perhaps um, what I've done for the past few days, I've tried to gather as much as information from the conventional system that today they are pro-Islamic finance. I mean, they themselves accept the fact that the system is viable. All right? Now, the principle of Islamic finance, the very first one, prohibition of riba. Now, we hear it every time, prohibition of riba, interest, interest. Everyone is, the moment we mention Islamic finance, interest. Now, let's try to understand the word interest. Now, you just write earlier, according to the IOF statement, interest means any stipulated amount, right, you determine on a loan. All right, you let's say, for example, you borrow 100 rupees and if you're asked to give back 110, the 10 rupees is interest. Now, the word interest itself is very broad. If you look at the Sharia itself, I'm sure you, some of you are very familiar with the word interest. We have Ribad al Fat, Ribad al Nasiya. Now, I'm not going to talk about the Sharia perspective of interest today, but the, the the, the meaning, if you, have, if you have a chance to go to look at the previous website later when you download the this, this slides, you will see that interest does not necessarily mean the excess on the 100 rupees. Now, it could mean something more than that. It could be like exchange for different qualities. It could also mean bribery today. Right, we have we've seen a lot of injustice in a society because of bribery. So interest itself is very broad. All right. Now let me share something with you. Why we say that interest is not prohibited. Now according to Imam Razi, according to Imam Razi, or let me put it in our in in our. Uh, today time. Now, if you have to borrow 100,000 Mauritius rupees, with all respect to bankers here from any conventional bank, for a trade, you want to go to China to buy some stuff and bring it back to Mauritius and sell it. Now, you walk into the bank, the bank said, fine, I'll give you 100,000 Mauritius rupees, provided you pay me X, X amount of interest within, let's say, one year, all right? Now, look at, look at the, the agreement here. You have not yet started a business. You have not yet, you haven't yet flown to China. You haven't purchased any item. You have not earned any profits, but you have to serve, you have to pay the principal and the interest, all right? Now, this is very clear that there is no risk sharing from the lender. And this, according to Islam, is a means of injustice. Right? Now, this is why you see later one of the points, uh, number three, that one of the basic principles, the principle of Islamic financial system, is to share risk. Now, the second element that we are not sometimes, uh, it, it isn't clear. Money, right, is not traded. 
money is not a commodity. Money is an instrument. Now, the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam has emphasized a lot on this issue. Right. Now, this is, again, one of the very difference we have between an Islamic bank and a conventional bank. Because when you look at a conventional bank, money is traded. This is why interest is acceptable. Now, in Islamic finance, money is not traded. All right. Now, just for the uh, uh, for knowledge base, there are various items beside money. I mean, those days we used to say gold dinar. Dinar is gold coin. We used to have silver coin. 